Praise the Lord. Welcome back to God's Way Community Church. Amen. Today is April 7th, 2021. We thank God for just having a wonderful uh, Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Just recently, we thank God for those who have, have had a chance to get back to the house of God, to worship, to fellowship together. We thank God for you that are listening to the video today. We pray that you will receive uh, a blessing from the Word of God today in our lesson for today. So we're going to go on with our lesson, and our lesson title for today is God Can Restore All. God Can Restore All. We're talking about the post-COVID uh, time period where we're easing out. It seems that we're moving out from the COVID somewhat. And we're talking about God restoring the things that we have lost, the things that we have to ha have had to deal with throughout the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. So uh, we know that God can do great things. And we're going to be talking about that today because this is also a great time, even as we leave, uh, hopefully leave uh, the virus and move on to better times. This is also a fantastic time for us to reach out to people and for us to share with them the power of God and what God is going to do and what he has done. So we're going to talk about that today. God restoring things, God putting things back together, God mending us, God healing us from the inside, God restoring our souls that are broken, amen, from the things that we've had to deal with throughout the COVID virus. So uh, open your Bibles, if you would please, to the, the, our first chapter, which is going to be Joel chapter number two, verse 21 through 25. That's where we'll be taking our text. Now, before I do that, let's have a word of prayer. Then we'll do our housekeeping and launch right into this, all right? Father, in your blessed name, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Thank you for the word. Thank you for your restoration power. Thank you for bringing us through to the time that you have. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the things that have gone on that we have learned and grown by, and we give you the praise and glory, for you know that all things work together for good to them that love God. We give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, we thank God for you. Please, let's do our housekeeping now. Don't forget, download the document for today's Bible study. Hopefully, it will help you to be able to go through and uh, follow along if you want to do this later with the document and print it out. We thank God for being able to do that for some and give that out to everybody so you can have that. Amen. I thank God for that. All right. Don't forget also to go to the website and email us at worship at godswaytoday.org. Worship at godswaytoday.org. Don't forget to do that. If you have any questions, if you have any comments or anything that you want us to take a look at based on what you've heard on uh, the Bible study or throughout the Bible study, and we'll be glad to do that for you. All right. We'll try to get back with you as soon as possible. Now, with nothing else that I, th I think I need to do, let's jump into this Bible study. God can restore all. How many people believe that? I do. I know that God is a restorer and he is a healer. He is the healer because no one else can heal you. All right. So let's go to Joel chapter number two, verse 21 through 25. And we're going to be reading a few verses there, but uh, hopefully it'll lay the groundwork for what we're going to talk about and give us the uh, background information we need for this Bible study. All right. Number one, verse number 21, it says, fear not. Joel is writing the prophet Joel. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. That sounds good enough to me. Amen. For the Lord will do great things. Somebody say great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. Listen to that. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. Somebody say full. Amen. And I will restore to you the years that the locust did, hath eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Man, this is a powerful scripture. Amen. I love what God is saying here. And uh, we're going to talk about how God is going to restore us. Now, the COVID-19 has been, in, in, in all estimations by anybody's uh, calculations, 
devastating to most of the world. Uh, first of all, we've had millions of people who have died all over the planet, all right? And we've had uh, millions of more people who have been sick, and then some are still sick and still have yet to recover from the virus. And, and I know, I know even though we, we are moving somewhat out of the virus, we think here in the United States, uh, some people account that to the va vaccine that we're, we've been able to get out so readily. And uh, we hope that that is certainly the case and that God is going to give us a, 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 a reprieve and 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 receive this thing. We certainly hope this is the case. <laughs> we kind of feel like Noah's Ark. We've been in the water for a long time. We hope we start seeing some mountaintops after a while and get to some dry land. Amen. So we pray that God will do that for us. Amen. But I can tell you this much. It's been devastating. Businesses have closed. Uh, I was just looking at a local newspaper just the other day and one of the uh, uh, restaurants that my wife and I used to go to, a nice place. Uh, uh, they had the big bulldozer there showing that they were we're tearing it down. Amen. I don't know what's coming in this place, if anything is coming in this place. And that is a very common thing that has happened to many businesses and establishments. Some churches have closed their doors and will not open again. So a lot of businesses have done the same. That they, they are not going to reopen. So we know that this thing has been devastating. The people who have lost loved ones and friends and families to the virus, uh, they, they will remember that. And uh, it is something that they will carry with them for a long time. So, but I think too, I, that it wouldn't be a stretch if we compared the devastation of COVID to what we just read in Joel chapter number two. You see, God sent, let me say that again, God sent, amen, the caterpillar and he sent a, the uh, locust on the, the land of Israel because of the people's sin and it wiped out, those insects wiped out everything. Did you hear what God called them? My army that I sent to you. Amen. Now I'm not saying to, I'm not saying that God sent COVID, but I'm certainly telling you that God is trying to get our attention through COVID that he has allowed for whatever reason to be present in this world. If anybody thinks that God's not trying to tell us something through the COVID virus, then I, I think you really need to kind of back up and, and rethink that because he is certainly trying to tell this world something. All right. Now, it is, as is often God's way of doing things, he allows or he causes. In this case, he said he sent them. Okay. He allows things to happen to us to get our attention, to shake us up a bit, to wake us out of our apathy, to cause us to recognize that he is the sovereign God. Amen. And sometimes when we're going astray, we sometimes have to be waken up so that we can be brought back into perspective. And sometimes God will do that through a number of things in the Old Testament, he did it many times through famines in the land. Things like we just read with locusts going in and eating up every green thing they could see. I mean, it was so devastating that God said, it, 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 I, I'm going to replace the years. And here's what's great about that. When we read that scripture, we talk, God said, don't worry. Don't fear, because look what he says. He says, the, the field is going to start growing and the pastures are going to start springing. What does that mean? Green grass is going to start growing back again. Isn't that wonderful? Then he says, the tree is going to start bearing her fruit. The fig tree and the vine are going to yield their strength. Okay, they've been eaten down to nothing, been destroyed. Nobody thought they'd ever grow back. But God said, guess what? I'm going to put it back. Then he says, look, rejoice because I gave you the rain moderately. I'm going to really give you the rain that you need. Why? Because you need a form of rain to get your crops kind of saturated so they can take root and start growing. Then in the, in the end of the, the uh, harvest time, before the harvest is due, there's usually another heavy rain season that brings the crop to full maturity. So this is what God is talking about when he uses the phraseology, former and latter rains. So he said, don't worry, I'm going to give you that too. Look at what God has said, and I'm going to restore to you, get this folks, I'm going to restore to you the years that the locusts and the other insects took from you. They ate so much and caused so much damage that they lost years of productivity. Wouldn't you say that's exactly what's happened with COVID-19? There's been so much devastation when so many businesses closed and so many people distraught and so many folks sick and so many uh, headaches and so many things going backwards and children out of school and teachers not having their jobs. There's been so much that many people are afraid we have lost a great deal that cannot be restored. But I want to tell you something, God can restore 
all. Amen. I love this. This is a message of excitement, a message of hope, a message of telling us that God, no matter what he has allowed, can rebuild it all. Now, let me ask you a question. Why would God take the time? Just think about this. Why would he go through the trouble of destroying all those things for the people of Israel and then building them back again? Why? Why not just let them stay torn down? Why not just let them deal with it? I'll tell you what I think while you're pondering it. You know, one of the things, I'll, this reminds me of my childhood growing up. One of the things that I noticed about my dad is that when he would discipline us for some reason, he didn't stay mad about it all the time. He, he would take care of it, whatever it was, however he chose to discipline us, uh, he would do that. But he wouldn't keep talking about it. He wouldn't keep going on. He wouldn't, he wouldn't see us the next day and remind us how horrible we were the day before. I mean, he would be likely even in the next hour or two if he was going somewhere and we said, Dad, can we go with you to town or whatever? To go? Uh, yeah, come on, you can go. And uh, he would be even likely to buy us something when we got to the place where we were going. Uh, that's just the kind of way he did things. And I liken that into the way God deals with us sometimes. When God punishes us, he doesn't ramble on and go on and condemn us forever. Amen. The one scripture in the Bible says, I will not be keep angry forever. He won't stay angry forever. So God will Will not always stay angry with us even if he does cause something. Here's the second thing. Did you know this? Sometimes God will restore what we've lost as an effort to show us that he is the one that can do the restoration. That even in the times of our, our distraught situations, we need to look to God and remember that he is the one that can do the restoration. Sometimes God will do that just so that we can know that he is God as he said to the people of Israel, that you may know that I am the Lord. Sometimes we need those kind of lessons for God to be able to show us, man, he built all this up again. The trees are growing back. We've got our fruit back. We look around and we got our health back. We look around and we've got the things that we lost. My God, look at how good God is. And we begin to do what? Look up and praise the God that gave us everything. Sometimes that's exactly why God does what he does. Now let's go to the first part here. Sometimes God will use suffering to deal with us. First Peter chapter five, verse 10. Look at what Peter says here. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while. Listen to that. After you have suffered a while, okay? Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Notice the very first part of that. It requires suffering first. Hello, somebody. Sometimes suffering is for our good. But guess what? Something good, have you ever noticed this? Good things always seem to follow something bad. Like when there's rain, eventually the clouds are going to come out and then the sun's going to pop out, right? When, when there's, there's a trial, before you know it, there's a triumph. When there's failure, if you keep working, there's success. Something good always seems to follow th bad things. Just like when we had wars, when World War I or World War II, there's always a restoration or a recovery period after that, isn't it? And then there's a boom time and people are, are, are making things again and manufacturing is going on. It seems to be that way. Look at what God says. When you suffer a while, sometimes it takes us going through a COVID-19. Hello, somebody. Let me tell somebody something. We may have to go through another COVID-19 before God's message is really heard the way he may be trying to get it across. Amen. We don't know, but we do know this much. God can allow these things to come and he can restore all things once they're over. He has that a power. Look what he says in the next part of this verse. It will make you, after you've suffered, will establish you perfect you, strengthen you, and settle you. Isn't it amazing that God uses suffering to make us perfect? Isn't it amazing that he uses suffering to settle us? Some of us need to be settled. Some of us are bouncing off the walls of every little thing that's going on, and we need to learn to settle down. And you know what God uses to do that? Sometimes he uses suffering, COVID-19. Sometimes he uses other things, uh, canker worms and locusts and whatever he chooses to use. 
I think I mentioned this the other night at one of our on our prayer call. But just recently over in Australia, they've been overrun in one particular country over there, one particular county or something with millions of mice. They don't know where these mice came from. They just showed up and they're in the covers. They're in the kitchen. They're, people said they're running across their beds at night. And, uh, they, and, and one guy said they smell whether they're dead or they're alive. Man, my mind went to God sending the plagues in Egypt and sending the flies and the lice. Can you imagine opening your cupboards and there are mice all over your good china that you don't ever use anyway? Nah, that's just a joke. Some of you probably do use your china. Can you imagine there are, well, you probably would never use it again. <laughs> but God can bring a plague on just like that and turn it off just like that to teach us. And then you know what he would do? He'll restore everything we lost. He can restore everything that was broken. He can restore everything that we, that we had happen that was negative. He'll turn it into something positive to show us what? That he is God and that not only does he chasten us, but he also rewards us and loves us and brings us to another day. I thank God for that. I hope we're moving to another day through the bright side of COVID and going to the other side of this thing. Amen. Because I believe God's going to do a great thing with us and restore all that we've lost. All right, let's go to the next one. God can restore our rest. How many people know you need to rest? There are some people who have been so stressed out, so distressed, so distraught, so confused behind COVID. They need to rest. Amen. I know some people are glad that they're, re they're, re they're releasing the, the restraints on travel so that people can go travel a little bit more. Amen. I'm planning to go somewhere in the next few weeks here myself or the next few months uh, myself if the Lord will, will uh, say the same and uh, bless us to be able to do that. Amen. But amen, we're, we're, we're glad to be able to get out and about a little bit. Amen. Why? Because we haven't felt like even though we've been uh, uh, quarantined, even though we've been dealing with being at home and not being able to go as much, we really, many people haven't still been able to rest as much as they wanted to. You, you know why? Some of them had to be locked in with little kids for, for all day long. <laughs> Amen. They didn't think they, they, they thought they were going to get some rest, but when those children were home from school all day, it wasn't as easy as some people may have thought it would be. Amen. So there are people who still need rest. God can restore that. Look what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Look at that. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for, my, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We know that we need that. And one of the things I love about God when he says this, he says, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. There is no restriction on what kind of labor or how heavy your laden, your burden is that keeps you from coming to God. You can have any burden, any labor, and God's going to deal with it. I love that about him because he is our source of rest. Thank God Almighty that I can turn to him because he can restore even the rest that I've lost and bring me back to the place I need to be. God can restore our health. Let's take a look at that. Look at Psalms chapter 147 and verse number three. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, you and I probably know a lot of people who are broken hearted because they have lost loved ones to COVID-19. Isn't that right? I, I wouldn't doubt it if most people that are listening to this video know at least one person, probably in their family, that have succumbed to the COVID virus or at least been very ill as a result of coming in contact with the virus. It's touched so many families and there are some people who are really broken hearted. I've read about people who lost six family members and I'm not talking about distant family members. I'm talking about brothers and sisters, a mom, a dad, amen. Almost all of their family they lost to the COVID virus one after another. Talking about a broken heart, talking about devastation, Talking about feeling like the, the locals have just eaten everything you've gotten. Man, I tell you what, that's got to be a horrible thing to feel that. Amen. But God said, I can restore all things. Now, how can he do that? God can give you something that will replace what you lost better than you can ever imagine. And I know he'll do it. Look at Isaiah 38 verse uh, 4 and including 5. This is when the uh, king Hezekiah, you've probably heard this particular story many times when Hezekiah was going to, was sick and he was going to die. Amen. And, and, and he didn't want to die at the time. So he cried unto the Lord. And the scripture says in verse number four, then came the word of the Lord saying to Isaiah saying, 
Go and say to Hezekiah, thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. Amen. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Look what God said he'll do. I'm going to restore unto you the years that the locusts took from you. God can give us more time. Amen. If more time is what we need, if a mended heart is what we need, God can do that and he can heal us and restore our health. Amen. My, my mind goes to uh, the book of Job next, where Job lost so many things in his turmoil. Okay, let's go take, take a look at that for a minute. God can restore your lost possessions. Did you know that? Now, a lot of people may doubt that. A lot of people may say, man, I've lost this and I don't think I'm ever going to get it back. But watch what God does for Job here. And I'll show you how God works in mysterious ways. All right. Job chapter number 42, verse number 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Now, if you remember this story, you may recall that Job had mules, he had uh, he had camels, he had sheep, he had all these oxen and thousands of them, and he lost them all. They were all killed in a day. You may recall that Job had ten children, amen, and he lost every one of them. They were killed in his eldest son's house while they were eating. The entire house collapsed on them, killed every one of them. You may recall that Job was very devastated. And not only that, he was stricken with boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet that he had to lay in to try to, in ashes, to try to get some comfort of some sort that was on his body. So this man went through a period of misery like most of us could not even fathom, okay? But the Bible says that when in the end of all that, Job did not charge God foolishly, okay, nor did he lose his integrity. He held on to the fact that God knows my case and he's able, amen, to deliver me. I don't know why he's destroying me, but although he destroys me, yet will I trust him. The verse we just read, the Bible says he restored to Job all that he had, gave him twice as much as he had. Now, you may recall that the wife of Job tried to get Job to curse God and die. But Job would have nothing to do with that, right? And thank God for that because God used that same woman to give Job 10 more children. See, God may not be able to bring back the child we lost. He may not be able to bring back the cousin I lost, but God knows how to give you something to replenish the hurt, to take away the pain of what you have lost. So that when you look at what God did, I guarantee you when Job saw those 10 children, he was so excited and his heart was probably moved so much it helped ease the pain of his loss before. See, God may not give you the exact thing, but he can restore it in some way so that you and I can go on and rejoice and say, man, look at what God did, how he blessed us regardless of what we have lost. God can restore all things. I want you to remember that. Amen. As we're coming to this point where we're beginning to ease back into our church services, go back into the buildings, it's important for us to remember this, that we need to continue to give God praise. This is not a time for us to slack off and say, oh, we're out of the woods now. No, this is a great time for us to begin to bombard God and cry to heaven. Remember what the scripture we just read with Hezekiah? He said, I heard your cry. Amen. This is a time for us to keep letting God know we believe that you, God, are the restorer of all things. Restore us to the full force that we were. Restore us to the place that we were, and we'll give you the glory and praise for it because we know you can restore all things. All right? Very important for us to keep that in mind. Now, most importantly, out of everything we are dealing with, here's what God wants to restore most. He wants to restore our relationship with him. God can restore the soul. Amen. That's the most important thing. All right. Psalms chapter number 23, verse one through and including three. And we'll read that. Then we'll read Psalms chapter 54, verse number four. All right. So it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Listen to that, somebody. I love Psalms chapter 23. Most people have heard this many, many times. I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Okay, look at what it says in verse number three. I'll read that again because it's very important. He restoreth my soul. Okay, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. God is a soul restorer. How many people know that? He will restore the soul. Friend, let me tell you something. If there's anything in this country that needs to be restored, it's the soul of this country. It's our spiritual context. Amen. We can lose a car. We can lose a house. A building might fall down or get burned down or whatever the case may be. And even though we don't want that, amen. But when our soul is broken, when our soul is estranged from God, when our soul has been separated from the God we, we care about, amen. And there are a lot of people, believe it or not, who have gone back in their relationship with God since this pandemic started. There are people who have not drawn closer to God. They've gone further away from God. They are in desperate need of soul restoration. Amen. And God's just the person to do it. He's just the one that can actually do that job for us. God's just the one that can do that. Okay. Because God is the only one that can restore the soul. All right. They are in desperate need of that. Look what he says in Psalm chapter 54, verse number four. Behold, God is mine helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. God can send somebody along that will uphold us spiritually, that will uplift us and keep us going in the right direction, keep us moving toward him. God does that, and he has the power to do it. It's very important that we understand that. I read something just recently that really brings this point home, I think. Did you know that a number of surveys that have come out in the recent times since the COVID virus uh, have been checking about how much people are reading their Bibles to see if people are reading their Bibles anymore, if they're going to church anymore. A number of the surveys have declared that even though people are reading their Bible more, they're not really living any more godly. They're still not really being any more connected. They're, they're not feeling any more closer to God. Some of them don't have a relationship with God still. See, saints, let me tell you something. We are in a situation where we need God. Despite what the pandemic has done to us, we need God to fix us spiritually. If nothing else gets fixed in our lives, we need God to fix us spiritually. Amen. Because there are so many people who are broken. There are so many people, and I can tell you something else too. There are a lot of people who have lost hope in God because they blame God for the pandemic. Oh, yes. There are people who blame God for the pandemic and don't let this frighten you because that's the way the Bible says it's going to be in the last days. They're going to shake their fist at God and they're going to be angry when things come upon the earth and they're going to blame God, the Bible says, instead of repenting, they're going to shake their fist at him. So don't you uh, uh, doubt for a minute that there are those people who really look at God and say, if he was really a good God, how could he allow such a pandemic to kill millions of innocent people, women, children, elderly people? People. Why would he do this? Listen, friend, let me tell you something, and I, I, I won't go to this scripture. Maybe I'll put it in your text for you. But in Ephesians chapter number five, it talks about that, that the, that the Lord allows certain things to come upon the earth because of the sin of the people that are on the earth. So it's a very good thing to think about. What are we doing in the way we live that may have allowed God or caused God to say, I'm going to allow this thing to take over them so that they can actually wake up so that somebody's soul can, can wake up and come back and be where they need to be with me. Amen. We need God to restore the most important thing we have, and that is our soul. And guess what? God can do that. He can restore the soul. No matter what goes on, no matter how bad the pandemic has been, God can restore all. The people of Israel lost almost everything they had. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, the aftermath of a, a locust. I haven't seen that in real life. I mean, people who lived in places like Kansas and Missouri and places like that in the Midwest have talked about it. But I've seen films of, of when the locusts go through a territory. Man, they can strip everything. Uh, uh, vegetation not, not long ago in, the, I think, Africa, in Kenya. Maybe I think it was Kenya. It was that they were or somewhere around that area that they had a few months back uh, or they had the uh, locusts come through. And man, the things that they showed on there, the, just uh, they could eat. The, the area and all the vegetation, you imagine working hard to get all that to grow and all of a sudden, just like that, it's gone. 
God can allow that to happen. And that's what has seemed to have happened with us with COVID. I mean, we had, uh, the economy moving along okay. Uh, unemployment was low. I mean, amen. All those things were in place. We were seeing like we were doing really good. And all of a sudden, boom, along comes this virus and it just throws everything in a whirlwind. And we, we need to ask ourselves, amen, maybe God is trying to get us to acknowledge that he is the God of all gods. Maybe he's trying to use a bit of suffering to get us to understand who he is and what he's capable of. And I want to tell you this much, going to the end of this thing is going to take God if God doesn't say release it and doesn't allow it to stop, it won't be stopped. Amen. It's going to take God no matter what. It's going to take God no matter what. And he can restore, no matter how bad it may seem, he can restore whatever things we have lost. If we give God the glory and the praise, he can do that. And I'm sure he wants to do it to show himself mighty in the land. That was very customary for God to do in the Old Testament. Now, before we leave the Bible study today, I got a few more things I want to talk about. Let's talk about restoration and how we can experience restoration of the soul. This is very important. Our relationship may seem estranged. Some of you may not feel that you're connected to God as you wanted to be. Uh, maybe you didn't get a chance to do as much reading and locking in and fasting and shutting in as you thought you might. And you still feel somewhat disconnected from God. Well, I'm going to tell you this before I go because this is important that we do this. You still need to get connected and restored to God. And God wants to restore the relationship that you may have lost. Perhaps you uh, were going forward and got set back. You couldn't get connected with things with the church. The Zoom meeting wasn't your thing. You kind of fell out of pocket. You, you weren't around or whatever the case may be. Uh, you didn't have internet access. The church shut down. I don't know what happened, but there could have been a number of things that happened in people's lives that have caused them to be disconnected from God. God wants to restore you more than anything else. Amen. Amen. He cares more about your relationship with him than he does any physical thing that you've lost. Out of all the things that God gave Job, what God cared about most was Job's relationship with him. Amen. What he cared about most was his relationship. So God can restore everything you've lost, but what he wants to restore more than anything is your relationship if it's broken. Amen. So here's how to do that. So how do we experience a restoration of our relationship? How do we get our relationship restored or with God if that's what we have had broken throughout this time? Here's how we do that. Number one, there are several things I want to leave with you before we go tonight because this is very important. And I want you to know that God can restore you and he wants to do that. Renew your commitment with God. Amen. Amen. Renew your commitment with God. Amen. That's the most important thing that you need to do to get started for God to restore that relationship or that, that soul that's broken. Go to Luke chapter number nine, verse 23 to 24. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Did you hear that? That's commitment in it. Commitment is doing something daily. God can restore all, and if you want him to restore what you've lost in your relationship, if you've lost anything, if you've gone back, if you feel yourself cooling off, then here's how to do it. Pick up that cross, deny yourself, and follow Jesus every day, one day at a time. Don't try to live for next year or next week even. Live one day at a time. For whosoever will save his life will lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall save it. That's what God wants us to do. Number two, surrender to God completely. This is a big one. This is a big one because sometimes we have trouble surrendering to God completely. Luke chapter number 22, verse 41. I love this scripture and you've heard it read probably many, many times, but I love it as people quote it all the time because it shows just how committed Jesus was and how much he wanted to show us what it was to completely surrender. Luke 22, verse 41 to 52. Look at what it says. And he was withdrawn from them, talking about Jesus when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, okay, about a stone's cast and kneeled down and prayed saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. That last part of that verse, starting at nevertheless, is what we need to remember. We don't like pain. We don't like to suffer. Nobody does. 
We all agree to that. But Jesus showed us that even in the darkest hour of his life, he had to be willing to surrender himself completely to the will of God. I know we say this all the time. We pray the prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But do we really mean that? Okay, let his will be done and not ours. If you want God to restore the relationship that perhaps you have lost, if you've lost your relationship, your connection through all this COVID business, you don't feel connected to God. You're estranged from him. You don't know who he is or who you are in God. Then let him restore that as well. And this is how you can do it. Make sure you surrender yourself to God. And here's the last thing. Don't play church. Saints, I've got to throw this out there because there are so many people who don't realize that God sees all that we do. If we're going to follow him, we've got to do it with a whole heart and sincerity. We can't have do it if we want God to really restore us. We've got to get all the way in or God's going to say we've never been in. Amen. This is very important if we want restoration. All right. First Timothy 3 verse 1 through 4, 1 through 5. Paul goes and he talks to Timothy about how the last days will come. Look at what he says. Know this also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, verse number three, not without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Wow, that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? Man. And, people, and there's probably more. But Paul said they're going to be all that. Can, can anybody say last days? We're living in the last of the last. We see this all the time. All these things we can name, we've seen happening all over the world all the time. Look at verse number five and what he says. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Here's the clincher. They have a form of godliness. If we want God to restore us, God can restore us. If it's the health we've lost, he can restore that. If it's possessions we've lost, he can restore that. If it's years we lost, sickness came upon us, whatever the situation, God can restore it. What he wants more than anything is to restore relationship. He can restore the broken soul. He can lift up that broken soul. But we've got to be willing to surrender ourselves to God. We've got to be willing to pick up our cross and follow him. We've got to be willing to get in there and not just pretend and have a form of godliness, but get a hold of this thing for real. All right. Look at first John two and six. He that said he abided in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Acts chapter one, verse eight. Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, as Paul was talking to Timothy about what people were going to do, and he said, listen, they have a form of godliness. What does that mean? That means they look religious, they act the part, they, they may look the part on the outside, but on the inside, it's empty. They have no power to live like God says to live. They deny the power thereof. So what happens? They may talk about God in one sentence and turn around in the next breath and commit sin and live in sin the next Second, uh, we, we see that happening with people many times. This is not what God intended. God wants to restore people who are in situations like that. He wants to bring them into a place of real fellowship with him. Now, one of the things that's important for us to remember about this particular text, he said they deny the power thereof. What power? What power thereof? The Bible says in the book of Acts, what? That you shall receive power after that, what? The Holy Ghost has come upon you. So many times what we're seeing is that people don't have the Holy Ghost in them to cause them to be able to live according to the way God wants. And for that reason, they fall away from God. They're not doing what God wants them to do. And they are estranged from him. But God wants to restore that. If our relationship is going to be restored to God, we've got to renew our commitment to him. We've got to get serious about that. We can't say, oh, wow, well, this, this, this COVID has been going on so long. I, I've lost all my hope in God. Man, don't even go there. Paul said, cast not your confidence away, okay? Believe God. Know that he can restore all things, even your broken relationship. Then you need to surrender completely to him. Surrender to him and yield to God and he'll do it for you. And last, don't play church. Get in there. Be real with God. 
Get the Holy Ghost on the inside so you can live it on the inside and the outside. And you can remember this. God will restore all. He'll bring you to him. He'll build you. He'll establish you. He'll settle you. And he'll make you perfect. After you've gone through some things, you'll begin to see that God's not going to keep us in this place forever. He doesn't mean to keep us down to the point that we're destroyed. No, he's taught us some things through COVID. Hasn't he? I don't know about you, but I've learned some things about myself and God through this COVID virus. Oh, yes. He's taught us some things through the COVID virus. But his intention has never been to destroy us and keep us down to the point that we've lost all hope. That's one of the beautiful things about God. He never punishes to the point that there's no hope. Okay. But he's going to turn right around like he did the people of Israel and said, I'm going to restore to you. The things that I sent my armies to take from you. Man, isn't that wonderful? We're coming to the backside of COVID, it seems. I pray that we are. I pray that we're moving beyond the valley of the shadow of death. I pray that we're going out, as Jesus said to his disciples when he put them on the boat in the book of Mark, let us pass over to the other side. I pray that we're passing over <laughs> to the other side. But I'm going to encourage you to do this. Keep giving God the glory and keep remembering and reminding yourself daily that God can restore all. Whatever you've lost, whatever you, some people have lost income, billions of dollars in income have been lost through COVID virus, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, amen. The stimulus package is trying to put back some of that. Amen. I don't know how long that can go on, but amen. They, they, billions of people have lost money. Uh, millions have lost their jobs. Uh, thousands of, of businesses, probably hundreds, if not thousands of businesses have closed and they have had to lay off those employees or fire those employees because they just couldn't bring them back to work. Amen. So the monetary devastation is huge, but I want you to know that God can restore all that. He's bringing us to a new day. A new time is dawning. We have may endure for a night, the, the psalmist said, but joy cometh in the morning. Don't forget, God can restore all. I hope this Bible study helps you. I hope it gives you a little bit of hope, causes you to remember that God is the one who is going to bring us out. He's taking us through. He'll continue to take us through. And when he's ready and he says it's over, it's over. Then we can rejoice, we can celebrate, and we can look to God and say, God, I know you're able to restore us and bring us back to where we used to be. We'll give God the praise for that. Don't forget, do it God's way and get God's results. In Jesus' name, we'll see you back here next time.